Let me just tell you where this started. I made a video. I was calculating the moment of inertia of a sphere, uh, and then I did it. I did it a couple different ways, and then one of the ways I did it was to break up a sphere into thousands of individual points, and then calculate the moment of inertia due to each point and add them all up. And I and I I made a, a method for calculating the plotting out these points. And someone said, a couple people said actually, they said, why don't you just do random, randomly generated points? And if you do enough, it should be fine. You just have randomly distributed distributed points in a sphere and you calculate that. And I was like, that is awesome. And I did that. And I'll link that down below. And then and then I had another comment that said, why don't you just why'd you do it in Cartesian coordinates and then cut, you know, do this trick thing, which I'll show you in a second. Why don't you just do spherical coordinates? So I'm gonna talk about polar coordinates just because it's easier, and we're gonna do we're gonna do two random circles. Okay, so the first question is, how do you make random numbers in Python? And in, and just to be clear, I'm going to be using GlowScript Python, which is vPython, uh, and I'll be using Trinket.io. But you can make random numbers in Python. In Python, it's actually there's a lot of ways to do it. With GlowScript vPython, really there's only one. I think there might be another way, but there's there's really just one way, and that's with the random function. So the random function returns a random number between the between zero and one. And I want to use that to to plot some stuff. So what if I want to make some values between negative one and one? Well, then I'd have to do something like this. So I'd have a random number from negative one to one. I'd say random, which gives me from zero to one. Multiply that by two, and then subtract one. So the maximum that could be would be two minus one, which is one. The minimum the random function would be would be zero. So zero minus one is negative one. So that gives me between negative one and one. That's what I'd want. It should be a random distribution between those two values. Uh, if I want to make a random vector in Cartesian coordinates, it'd just be, this is in, in polar. I'm keeping it in two dimension. So it's ran, the two times random minus one for the x coordinate, another two times random minus one for the y coordinate, and then zero for the other one. How would you make a circle? And I'll show you how to do this. Uh, but basically what you do is you make a random vector and you measure the magnitude. So it'd be x squared plus y squared. You can even take the square root if you want to do a, a circle of one. And if that random value has a magnitude greater than one, then don't plot it. Don't count that one. Do it again. Okay. Then that will cut away all the ones that will you be only left with ones inside a circle and it should work. And I'm going to do that for you. Okay, now here's the other way we're going to do it. What about polar coordinates? So in polar coordinates, we don't use x and y. We use the distance from the origin and the angle theta to measure a point. And so I still have two coordinates I have to determine random numbers for. So for r, I would have to go from 0 to 1, and that'd just be random. I'm doing a circle of radius 1. And then for theta, I would do from 0 to 2 pi. So that would be 2 times pi times random. So again, that would give me a number from 0 to 2 pi. And pi, the number is built into GlowScript v Python, so I can just type it as pi. Now, if I want to plot these things, which I do, I'm going to need to switch to Cartesian coordinates because the plotting in, in GlowScript v Python is in Cartesian. And so you'll say x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Now, one, so I have two ways to make these circles. And here's what I want to do. I want to test. What, what about the center of mass? So if I, if, I, or if I center these circles around the origin, the center of mass should be at the origin. Okay, And I think these will both vary a little bit, uh, but we can do that. The, oh, I did that twice. OK, the average r value. So this is one that's going to be really the thing it, that I think is the polar coordinates is not going to make a uniform distribution of points where the Cartesian method would. Okay, so it, how do you test that? It could still be uh, symmetrically about the origin, but not uniform. And so if I get the, if I just average up all the R values for my different things, that should tell me a difference between the, the distribution for the two value, values. Uh, then I can, this is what I originally wanted to do, the moment of inertia. So I can calculate the moment of inertia uh, by adding up m r squared for each point, uh, add that all up. If it's a disk, it should be 1 half m r squared. So we can check that. Uh, and then the center mass, I just said that twice. This is the thing I like, why did I do that twice? Uh, the density, um, I was thinking about the, the, the differential density, and I'm not really sure how to do that right off the top of my head. So I just want you to know that that's something I'm thinking about. Um, 
because you'd have to have a lot of data points and the density wouldn't be constant because you're dealing with discrete points. But that's something that would be cool to plot. And I, I think I'll just mention that and then we'll start on that. So I'm going to jump over to, to close group vPython and we're going to make a circle, a disk. Okay, it's a really thin disk. Out of a thousand points, we're going to do it with the Cartesian vector method and the polar coordinate method and then we'll see what the difference is. Okay, let's skip over there. Okay, so this is a uh, trinket. Io. It's a way to do Python online. Uh, I will include the link to this code down below just before I forget. And I've already kind of started here, but let's see. Uh, random circle, let's call this. Random circle one, just in case I want to make another one. Save that. And I already, I just did this. Uh, I got started because I was waiting for you and you were taking too long. Uh, so this is just a, t a test of the random function. You can see uh, random is the variable temp. I get 0.99, run it again. I get 0.6 and so forth. Okay. So let's build a, uh, I'm going to make a function, a function that creates a random number. I don't really have to do this, but let's say def, and it's a, it's a mass, okay? So def m c for Cartesian. I'm going to do the Cartesian first. And I don't need any inputs. Uh, and let's put a comment here. This makes a random Cartesian vector less than 1, less than r equals 1, which I'm going to do in just a second. But let's see first, let's just say uh, RT, let's just do it this way. Yeah, r, r temp is equal to the vector. Uh, there are vectors built into vPython, which is really cool. Uh, and it's just going to be, just like I said before, 2 times random minus 1. 2 times random minus 1. 0. Now, if... Hmm... Let's say uh, less than uh, less than LT one is less than one equals false. No. Run. Let's see. Do do it. <laughs> do it equals true. While do it. So what I want to do is I need to keep doing this until I get a vector that's less than 1. So let's say I'm going to first calculate this vector. And then I'm going to say if this vector, the magnitude of the vector, so magnitude of RT is less than 1, then do it equals false. Um, and that, 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 that's that's that keeps redoing this whole thing. Yeah, I think that works. And then so if I, as soon as do it does false, that's true, then I can just say return RT. Okay, that's a little weird. It's a weird function, but I think it works. So let's go down here and say uh, print MC. Let's do it a couple times. Copy it. Okay, there it goes. Okay, save it. Let's just print it a few times to see if we get some random vectors here. Okay, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't see a problem with those. Oh, yeah, that one looks okay, too. None of these look like they have a magnitude greater than 1, so I, I think it's working. And I'm just going to assume it is working. Okay, so now let's do this. Now let's say n equals 100. Let's make 100 data points. And, and this is kind of a weird way to do it, but I like to do things that make more sense computationally, or not computationally, but conceptually. And I'm going to say n equals 1. So n, capital N is the number of data points, and n is my counter. So then I'll say while n is less than 100, and then I want to just plot a data point. Let's just plot it for right now. So I'll just say sphere. Oh, let's give it a radius. Let's say rr equals 0 0.012. 2. And the position of the sphere is going to be equal to mc. Right? That's a vector. I can do that. And then the radius is going to be equal to rr. 
and then I'll say n equals n plus 1. And let's run that. There you go. So those are two dimensional, it's a, it's a two dimensional plot of 100 data points. Let's run it again. And it looks kind of spherical. It does not look like a square, right? So I think it's, it looks square ish, but let's just increase this to 1,000. See what happens then. That doesn't look like a thousand. Oh, it's kind of dumb. While well, n is less than n. That's nice. Look at that. There's a nice circle there. It's rotated around. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you could make the dot point smaller, but um, that's fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate the moment of inertia here. Uh, the first thing I need to do is dm. Let's see. Let's let's say the total mass is one. M equals one. So dm is going to equal to the total mass divided by n. Right, because I need to split that. If I have more points, I need to split up into more points. Uh, and then for the moment of inertia, I'll just say I equals zero. And then down here, I'm going to, let's do this. Uh, R temp equals MC. Let's put this as R temp. I'm just plotting these, right? Do I even need to plot these? I'll plot these a couple more times. And then I'll just turn that off. Uh, R temp and then I can calculate the moment of inertia. So I equals I plus dm times R temp, no mag, mag R temp squared. No, no, not squared there, there. Yeah, because the moment of inertia of a point is mR squared. And then down here, I'll print I equals I. And what are the units for I? Let's see, it would be kilogram meters squared. Let's put that in there. Kilograms meters squared. Oh, and then we should print, uh, what if, if it's a radius one and a mass one, then the moment of inertia should be a half, right? One half mR squared, that's the moment of inertia of a disk. Okay, so it looks like it's working. And then if I increase this up to, let's just turn off the sphere part and this change this to 10,000. See, it runs a lot faster. Okay, I'm pretty happy. Okay, you want to see what 10,000 data points looks like. Okay, fine. Do it one time. Yeah, check that out. That's pretty cool. That's kind of like art, you know? It really is. But now I'll turn off the display because it does slow everything down. Okay, so what are the other things I wanted to do? Let's plot the average R. Let's not plot, let's calculate the average R. Uh, so I'll say R total equals zero. And then down here, I'm going to say R total equals R total plus the magnitude of R temp. Because see, you know, oh, R temp. So what I'm doing here is I want to, to find the average value for something, really all I'm doing is adding up all those values and dividing by the number of things that I have, right? Which I know is in. So that's pretty easy to do. So let's uh, go over here and say, can't see that. Let's put print R av average equals, it's going to be R total divided by N. And it would be technically in meters. And let's see what we get. R total, R, R total, R total, R total. I misspelled them somewhere. No, I missed a comma. Okay, that's pretty cool. Let's put up here, uh, let's put a little thing, print, 
Cartesian stuff. Okay. 0.66. Okay, let's do one more thing. Let's calculate the x center of mass. So I'm going to say, just like before, uh, I, I need to go up here. Um, x sum equals 0. And I'm going to say x sum equals x sum plus uh, m, so it would be dm, times the x value, which is going to be r temp dot x. And then down here for the x center mass, I can just say print xcom equals, it's going to be x sum divided by the total mass m. And this should be close to zero, right? The center mass should be close to zero. And it is. Okay. Now let's do the same thing. Let's make a new function. And let's call this uh, def mp for polar coordinates. And this makes a random a polar circle, which doesn't really make sense, but that's fine. I know what I mean. Circle. Uh, I don't need to make this real weird loop. Cause all I need is the r and theta, and I can calculate both those. So let's say uh, r p temp for the polar temp. Is this going to be random, right, between 0 and 1? And then theta temp, theta t, is going to be 2 times pi times random. And then I'm going to return the vector r. So now I've used that r cosine theta stuff. So it's going to be r p temp times cosine theta t, r p temp times sine theta t, 0. That's it. Okay, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to, let's try this. Let's try something fun here. Turn this down to a thousand so that we can see it. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to plot, I'm going to plot the, uh, that, uh, let's say R temp 2, let's say R polar, I don't know what I'm, I'm, I'm talking about here, MP. Okay, so the first sphere right there is going to be, um, and let's make this smaller. That's going to be my uh, Cartesian coordinates. And then sphere position equals R polar, radius equals RR, color equals color dot cyan. I don't know why I picked cyan, I just did. Okay, so this is going to plot two sets of 1,000 data points. Um, one is going to be Cartesian distributed, and the other will be polar. And let's just see if we can see a difference. Polar. MP. R polar. R polar. Let's just see. Print MP. Let's see what happens there. Hmm. Something bad happened. Something bad. Two times pi times random. Aha. Okay, what did I do wrong? Theta T random random. Theta T. I want to just copy this whole thing right here. And let's open up a new tab. New trinket. Close script. Okay. Oh, print MP parentheses. Okay, that is not. Raha! I see what I did wrong. Okay. I did wrong up here. Return the vector. 
I just returned a list. And then this should be print MP that. And I think everything else should work. Let's see. Yeah, check that out. Okay, I think you can kind of see the difference in the white versus cyan. You notice it looks at least to me, okay, I'm going to increase this to 10,000. I, you know, I don't like to do that, but I'm going to do that anyway. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. Mm, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, but I think I think definitely there's more in the center for the cyan because what happens is uh, imagine a line of randomly distributed distributed points for each value of theta and then theta is evenly distributed but you're going to end up with more data points in the center than further out because of the way these spread out as the, the theta just go around so I think that's that so let's change that back to 1,000. Actually, I can change that to 10,000 and then just not display the spheres. Okay, let's change that back and let's turn these off. Okay, now what I need to do is to recalculate the stuff. So I'm going to say I, I need up here, I2 equals zero. That's my second moment of inertia. Uh, R total two equals zero x sum 2 equals 0. And then down here I can just copy this stuff. And change this to 2. Now here I'm not going to use r temp, I'm going to use r polar. r polar Sometimes it's easier just to retype everything because you can make silly, dumb mistakes by missing over stuff. But, you know, sometimes you've got to do dumb things to learn that they're not that smart to do. And this would be our polar.x. Okay, and then down here I need to print the stuff. So let's just, now again, I'm going to copy. And let's go up here to polar stuff. And that way I don't have to change the name. This is going to be I2, R2, 2, there. Run it. R total 2 is not defined. R, how did I do that? Okay, so what do we have? Let's see if I can, can I pull this down? I thought I could, okay. So we have the moment of inertia, 0.5. That's really good. Moment of inertia, not 0.5. Not 0.5. That does not work right there. Our average for the Cartesian, 0.67. Our average, 0.49. So it's the average position from the center is not as much. Now the center mass, both are close to zero, and that is what you would expect. So, you know, you could expand this. Uh, and do it in spherical coordinates. That'd be fun. I just didn't want to deal with another variable. Um, you could also try to figure out this whole density thing. But this is just for fun. I had fun. I don't know about you, but I had fun. Uh, like I said, I'll include this code below. Play with it. You can play with the code. If you click on that link, it will open up a code. You can change it and rerun it. And it won't It won't destroy it for me. You can always go up here. You can't see. Let's see if I can scroll up here. If you ever play with the uh, trinket code, and you go up here to reset, it will put it back the way it was when you made it. And you can copy it and make your own version and save it and all that stuff. So go play with Trinket. You're not going to learn Python without playing with it. But this is fun stuff. I had a good time. So I'll see you guys later.